welcome to today's daily draw. Today we're going to do some really beautiful hot air balloons. Now the drawing's not too complicated here but what I really want you to think about is the design because these are your balloons. You could create them in any way you want. Cover them with a design. Really let your imaginations go wild with them. So we're going to do the drawing. Then I'm going to show you some painting ideas and a few top tips if you've got any paints at home. If you haven't, don't worry, get the felt tips, get the crayons, the, the colouring pencils, whatever you've got, and let's sit down and do some drawing together. So all you need is a pencil and a rubber, and we're gonna start, as usual, with a little bit of a warm-up. So here's our scrap paper. Anything you've got, just a tatty old bit of paper, it's all you need, because we're gonna just start with some circles. Our balloons today are a circle shape. So we are gonna think about drawing circles. Now, if you draw a circle just using your wrist, so you've got a whole arm to draw with, but if we just use our wrist, that's what we're gonna get. It's quite difficult to do. But if we think all the way up our arm to here, to our shoulder, and what we've got here, here in the shoulder, we've got this lovely socket joint, this round joint. And if, when you're drawing circles, I want you to think of moving your whole arm. So today, as we practice, fill the paper with your circles. Now, have a go at pressing hard. It's never as good. Press softly so quiet you can barely hear it lovely quiet lines and we've also got some straight lines in this too so you can turn over if not just do them on top of the thing think about just doing keeping that arm straight while you do these straight lines so we're going to do some straight lines we're going to do some circles we're going to create the most magnificent hot air balloons Right, so we're going to do two hot air balloons, one big one, one ditty one. So work out where on the page you're going to put them. I'm going to have my big one about here. I'm going to have my small one about here, but you can put yours wherever you want. And if you want to do more, go for it. So when I'm drawing a circle, I always find it easier if I start off by putting the marks in of where it's going to be. And then just like I did on the warm up there, I'm going to get my nice big circle. Look how gently I'm pressing. Actually, you might want to go out a bit wider. So my first one is about there. All right, I'm quite happy with that now. So you can see very gently, I'm just putting in my mark. So this is so simple for me to rub out. And now I can go back over it and get my actual circle in. And I turn the page as well, if that makes it easier. I find I turn the page all the time. And anybody who's been to little art school classes will know that we also like to do a little bit of drawing upside down but we'll come on to that over the next few weeks right so we've got that first circle let's get in the second circle now much smaller so i think i'm probably going to go for about there to there about the size maybe just slightly bigger than a 10p piece really lovely gentle little lines i always find it harder to do on that side because i'm right-handed so I'm going to move the paper. Right, there we go. So we've got our two circles to start with. Now we're going to put the four lines in, which will make it to give us the strings. I mean, they're probably not strings, but you know what I mean, that come down from the balloon. Let's make it quite symmetrical. One. Now I'm not starting at the bottom. See that? I'm going a little bit up the circle, running with the line of the circle and coming down. We want them to finish in the same place. One, two, three, four. So that's our lines. And the same here as well. Again, run up the side of the circle. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you get those, pause it now and get those shapes on your paper and then we'll come on and we'll put the baskets on. Okay, so I'm going to put in our basket now. You can make these longer if you want or shorter. This is your balloon, but what I want you to do is to join them with a line. So you've got your line joining and then let's take that out. This is our basket. Take that out slightly further. Here we go. So that's the rim of the basket. I have to say, I have never been in a hot water, in a hot air balloon. And it is absolutely one of my dreams. So one day 
I will get to go in one. So you can see we're just bringing it down, bring the shape down, two lines on each side and join it at the bottom. It's a really simple basket there. And we'll finish this balloon off with a flag. Now you do your flag however you like. I'm gonna go out a little bit like that with mine, just a wobbly little line. And we'll do exactly the same on this one here. So take the line across, out a little at either side, take the basket down, and then a flag. This time, I think I might go for a square flag like that. So that's the next stage, popping the basket and popping the flag. So pause now and you do yours. Okay, right, let's have some fun with this now. I'm gonna give you an example of a design, but I absolutely want to see what you guys come up with. So you could do anything here. I'm just going to do a really simple pattern whilst you're thinking about what you're going to do on yours. I'm just going to do two lines across and look again how I'm holding my pencil about halfway up. So that just keeps your grip really nice and loose. We'll come here like that, take that across. Okay, so I'm just going to go for this nice simple design. Now another thing you can do is if you want, your basket doesn't have to be empty. You could fill it with whoever you wanted. Put your friends in, put your family in, put whoever you wanted in your little basket with you. I'm slightly afraid of heights, so I'm there, but I'm hidden underneath. So that's why you can't see me. With this one, let me just do a quick, simple thing here. And I might do a couple of dots. Okay, but you go crazy with your designs. And at the bottom of the page, we're just going to pop in a few clouds here. There we go. So you finish your design. Now, when you've got that finished, take, if you've got watercolour pencils or you want to find out more about painting in watercolour, keep watching. I'm going to demonstrate that. If you've not, if you want to just go for it now, colour it, design it, and make sure you post it to us at our Facebook page at Little Art School. Okay, so today I've got, I'm going to use two different types of things. I'm going to mix it up a bit here. I'm going to show you a very basic watercolour technique and then we're going to use our amazing watercolour pencils to do the balloons. Um, so here we go. I've just got a pipette. In my palette, I'm going to put a bit of water. I'm going to get my brush. This is just the sky. I'm going to do a really simple wash. So lots of different blues here. This is a cerulean. I love Love, love the word cerulean, cerulean blue. If any of the children who go to Newton Primary who come to the little art school are watching, they'll know all about cerulean blue. We love it. Right, so there's my wash. You can see all I did. If I wanted to make that lighter, I'd add more water. To make it darker, I'd add more paint. And what I'm going to do is really simple. I'm going to go around my balloon here, just around the balloon. And I think I'll go around the flag as well. I'll leave the flag. There we go. And then really quickly, I'm going to get this wash in here. Can you see? I'm just making sure that there's no gaps. Watercolour is a little bit unpredictable. And that is part of its joy. You never quite know how it's going to turn out. At first, I found that very difficult. But as time has gone on, that's one of the things I love most about it. So you can see we're creating a really lovely sky here, exactly the same around the little one. I'm using a big brush here. So background washes, you really need to go big, the biggest brush you can find, but still getting an accurate paint. I'm not, I'm going to go over where the strings are because I want the sky to show behind them. I know they're not strings. Someone can tell me what they really are. I haven't got a clue. Here we go. And down to the bottom. And I'm going to stop at the clouds and then I'm going to show you a little trick, which is a great little trick. So don't worry about the paint. Watercolour is so clever. If you use the correct paper, and that's the key really to this, is using proper watercolour paper, then it won't spill in on itself. It'll keep to its magic force field. 
Right, what I'm going to do is take a cup. I've got some clouds at the bottom here because I wanted it to look as if the balloons are coming above the clouds. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scrunched up bit of kitchen roll, artist's best friend, and I'm going to put in a couple of clouds. So that's all I'm doing here, scrunching it up. We'll just put in a couple of clouds and we'll edge that one off so it looks a bit more, a bit less. Okay, and there's our background sky and we'll just let that dry. It'll only take a few minutes and then we'll come in and do that. So my background wash is nice and dry now and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put a bit of design in. So you've seen me use these before. If you've watched some of the earlier films, if you've uh, uh, earlier videos, if you've not, it's just a watercolour pencil. And when I'm putting it down, what I'm actually doing is putting watercolour pigment on the page. So when I'm drawing, I press really lightly, but when I'm using these magic pencils, I actually press quite hard because I want the pigment down. I want quite a lot of it down. And I'm gonna get and put my pattern in here and there. And if we go around and like that. Now, I'm just gonna go around it and then I'm going to get my brush. Can you see? It's taking that pigment off, but it's keeping the pattern on. Oh, it's magic, isn't it? And I can do the same with my flag. But with my flag, I'm going to use a much smaller brush. So that I can not go over the lines. There we go. So there's that one. I'm going to do this little one, I think, in green. There we go, getting all the pigment on. I do love green, it's my favourite colour. You do yours in your favourite colour. And let me know what it is. Okay, I'll make it a bit, a bit bigger in the middle. Now, I might just use my big brush. And... So we've got the paint, but we've still got the pattern. And then the same for the flag. Now with the baskets underneath, let's just have a little think about this. What I want to do is have, I'm going to really lightly use my yellow ochre pencil for this background bit here. But I'm going to put the pattern on the top using... A sort of a brown which we call a burnt sienna now i'm not being fancy using these names these are the real paint names and we always use them at the little art school and part of the reason for that is i think they sound like poetry alizarin crimson and burnt sienna cerulean blue there we go right now i'm just going to take my little brush here and just a little bit of water to make an interesting basket and that's almost the end I just want to get a bit of brown so that these what what we can't decide is string or ropes and at the end what you mustn't ever forget to do as you're all artists is sign it so go to the Facebook page make sure you, you show us your pictures we can't wait to see the designs I really hope that you enjoyed that and I can't wait to see what you've designed. So everyone at Little Art School is loving seeing all your pictures that you're sending to us. So comment on our Facebook page. You can find us at, if you just put in Little Art School Scotland, you'll find us and um, put a picture of yourself with your painting or just your painting and let us see what amazing colours and designs you've used for your hot air balloons. And we're really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. I've got a little special treat on my sleeve for tomorrow. This is for my son, Henry, who's made a special request. And we're gonna be focusing on the underwater world of Nemo. So I will see you tomorrow when the next um, art lesson is gonna be released at 11 o'clock.